Welcome to City Magnet TV, a gospel media platform where we share life transforming content to help you grow in your walk with God. Turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. He shows us the first obstacle to engaging the Father. And the first obstacle is functioning as a hypocrite. If we were to do a good analysis of the book of Matthew chapter 6, you will see that there is a giving hypocrite, there is a prayer hypocrite, and there is a fasting hypocrite. If we wanted to do an analysis of Matthew chapter 6 uh, adequately. But you see, I'm not so concerned about the other aspects of this application but it is possible for you to be a prayer hypocrite and that's the first thing that Jesus reveals. If you want to engage God as Father, you must fight against the possibility of being a prayer hypocrite and I'm going to show you why. Because some guys are actually in the business of prayer but their delivery of prayer is in the category of the hypocrite. And because it is in the category of the hypocrite, they do not qualify for any response whatsoever. There's not going to be any feedback for their efforts. So that's the first thing that Jesus reveals. He said, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. So you see, the audience of the hypocrite is men. But the audience of the one engaging the father is God. And Jesus is saying, beware of putting up a prayer display that is designed to... Inform men that you have capacity to exercise yourself spiritually. Before he goes into the details of how to engage, he strikes at the possibility of hypocrisy in this delivery. He says, Do not be as the hypocrites are. The hypocrites want to be seen of men, and because of that, they are disqualified from their reward. Now, stay with me, stay with me. Are you with me? Okay. You will notice that when someone begins to engage in the enterprise of prayer, the reason why he's doing it is because he wants answers to prayer. He wants a feedback from God. <laughs> the idea here is a bit different from answers. What God has in mind to give to you for which he is inviting you to come into the prayer floor is a little bit higher than answers. God wants to give you rewards for prayer. Meanwhile, you are looking for answers to prayer. All right, I, I notice you are confused. I'm just following the script, okay? He said, verily, he said the hypocrite plays, manipulates himself outside of the possibility of getting a reward for his efforts. Are you there? So what God wants you to obtain, for which he gives you the invitation to come into his presence, are prayer rewards. And I don't have time this morning to show you a few prayer rewards. And the reason why you qualify for prayer rewards, God wants to reward you for prayer. But you want answers to prayer. So what we'll do is that we'll just limit the syllables to answers, the answer level. Because you desperately need answers uh, and, uh, so that you can know how to get them. But God's intention it's to bring you to the economy of rewards. Now, go on, go on. Next verse. Next verse. But thou, when 
thou prayest. He said, enter into thy closet. And when thou has shut the door. Hi. So there are too many metaphors here. He says, enter into thy closet. And if you notice, the closet there is idiosyncratic. The closet there is personal. The closet there is your closet, not our closet. It means that in prayer, you must be able to find your closet. And the closet he's talking about here doesn't mean the privacy of your dormitory. It doesn't mean a, a, a place, one of the forests on your campus, then you isolate yourself and go there and say, right now I'm in the closet. If you have not found your closet, it is called the prayer place. There is a place in the spirit from whence prayer is made. You must find that place and just, oh my, you're not with me. You're not. You're not there. Meanwhile, this is not my message. I'm just taking you on a ride. I've not arrived. But since you are not so interested in this ride, obviously. Now, there is what we call a prayer point. And there is what we call a point of prayer. Stay with me. Are you there? Now, the point of prayer is what we call the prayer place. There is a place that you must arrive at in the spirit before you can begin to prosecute prayer. And, 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 and that prayer place is different for individuals. So you must find your own place. That's what we call the point of prayer. It is when you arrive at the point of prayer that you can begin to offer your prayer point. Some people are offering prayer points when they have not arrived where? The point of prayer. You must have realized that uh, Prayer is not something you can accomplish with human energy, with fleshly energy, with the energy of the fallen man. And we know this from the book of Psalms 80 verse 18 that says, so we will not depart from thee, quicken us. Give me Psalms 80, not 18 verse 18, but 80, 80 verse 1, 8. He says, so we will not go back from thee. We will tarry in your presence until you quicken us. We cannot call upon your name. <laughs> I know most of us understand prayer in the energy of the flesh. You, are, you have not arrived at your point of prayer. Your point of prayer is that point where the Holy Spirit quickens you. When he quickens you, he gives you vocabulary. When he quickens you, he's the one that will be responsible for your prayer points. That inbuilt administration that is designed to support prayer takes full effect. The moment you arrive at the point of prayer, he said, when thou prayers, shut the door. Oh my. It's a journey into God. And if you really get into that point of prayer, even if somebody is singing reggae outside, it will not catch your attention. You'll be sucked into the spirit. And the intercourse of prayer will begin to take place. Are you with me? All right. So it says, when thou prayers, it says, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, When you arrive at the point of prayer, what the consciousness of what drives you is a consciousness of the environment of the before of God. And it doesn't matter what happens in your space. You are sucked into that realm and you can engage. The, the atmosphere is designed to be so personalized that you can engage your father. There's a warmth of relationship 
a warmth of love that is captured in that atmosphere that makes it an enterprise that was designed just for you. But you will never see the beauties of prayer in this regard if you have not been able to find a point of prayer when you begin to release your prayer points. I know we are used to coming in with a catalog of prayer points. And I need my white hair to become black. So there are all kinds of prayer points. But the, the challenge, there's nothing wrong with your prayer points, but you need to find the point of prayer. So, we will not depart from you. It means when that guy started prayer engagement, it was so, so dry and he was discouraged. But he determined that he will not depart because he's trying to arrive at what? The point of prayer. We will not depart from thee, quicken us. And we shall call upon thy name. You see, it's when you are quickened that, that you begin the calling. Because it, it survives on the energy that God makes available. The, yeah, you, you desire to pray, yeah. But prayer survives on God's energy. Meanwhile, you might do some things in the flesh, some efforts, some, make some attempts in the flesh, all right? And you will satisfy yourself that you are praying, but you never arrive at the point of prayer. And most people end their prayer sessions without arriving at the point of prayer. And if that's your case, if that's the description of your life, you will never see the power of prayer because it's not consistent with the prescription. According to the prescription, you need to find the point. It takes doggedness. It takes consistency. It takes going beyond how you feel. Sometimes you feel dry. Sometimes it's like a waste of time. And those feelings are the feelings of haste that Satan brings into your soul in order for you to perceive the adventure to be so, so, so terrible. And then you disembark before you arrive at the point of prayer. A man that is going to know prayer must understand the principle of endurance. To endure the storm that Satan creates in your soul. To distract you from the goal which is intimacy with God, which is encounter with God. You will need to stay put even though you are the turbulence. Satan creates a pseudo turbulence to make you feel that the adventure is of no effect. The adventure is a scam. And he has discouraged a lot of people outside of riches of, of intimacy with God because he starves you in your soul and creates an, a false alarm that makes you disembark from the adventure. Jesus said, your prayer begins when you shut the door. There is a location that you must find. In that location, God comes to give you his own energy and to quicken you so that you can call upon his name. It, 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 it's a sweet experience if you ever get to that place that is your point of prayer because the energy that drives the whole adventure is not from earth but from heaven. God sucks you into himself and he gives you the vocabulary with which to communicate to him. And, oh my God, it's, it's a, oh Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. You see, I, I was there before I came down here and it is so difficult stepping down out of that atmosphere to come talk to people. So difficult. I can be there till evening tide. And that's my real life. The life of a nocturna in the secret. Because when you find that place, space, time, poverty, lack, does not is not there. Oh my. Then, then God creates the atmosphere that makes you feel that he left the whole world just to attend to you. That's the kind of encounter that helps your perception of self-esteem. All the uh, motivational exposures that you have had to help improve your self-esteem is in futility. It is your encounter with the God of heaven as he zeroes in upon you 
and makes grace to abound toward you that becomes the source of your security because you have found security in him that everything can fail but the man you see in that place of prayer that point of prayer he will never die so heaven and earth can pass away Satan can stir up your environment make you feel that you are a failure but there's a place where you do not fail that place you'll meet with your father he doesn't he, he takes you beyond failure and in order for you to succeed I would like you to know you will need to win in your soul before you win on the ground and that's the place where our souls are restored the psalmist had a little experience of this matter that I'm talking about when he said that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want for he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul there were many times where there were there was there was confusion in, in my family and I went to that point of prayer and my soul drank into the tranquility that was resident in heaven and when I came out of the chamber the problems around did not change but my soul flourished with the wonder of the one that I had encountered sometimes God doesn't change the situation he changes you and when he changes you then you have the capacity to go through the situation For want of time, I need to shut down. First thing that we need to know when engaging God as Father, because someone here is tempted to say that, you know, I'm a father too, I'm a father of three, I'm a father of five, and because I'm a father, I think I understand, I have an idea of how God the Father is. I came to disappoint you. You lie. Your model of fatherhood is by no means approximated to the type of father that God is. And I need to show you from the scriptures because you will not believe me. So I want to take you to the book of Matthew chapter 7 quickly. Matthew chapter 7. Uh, I think verse 11. Matthew 7 verse number 11. Now, this is a contrast. Matthew 7, 11 is a contrast and a comparison. Once and again, you know, Jesus is an object teacher. In order to upgrade our understanding of things, many times he does comparisons so that we can put things in proper context. And that's the kind of thing that Jesus is doing here in the book of Matthew chapter 11. And he says, if then, if ye then being evil, sorry, See, it's Jesus speaking, not me. Hallelujah. Who am I to be able to say this? But you know, that's why even though you have a good pastor, you still need to hear Jesus. Because Jesus will tell you things that human beings might be afraid to tell you. Jesus said, if ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. And what Jesus means by this is, in comparison to God, your model of fatherhood is evil even though you are a good man that knows how to give good gifts to your children. And, and I apologize to fathers for that. All fathers, I apologize to you. But this is Jesus in his comparative theology. He said, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Now you, you, you are evil. In comparison to God the Father, your model is evil. Your model is is evil but yet you do good things to your children no one of them will come and ask you for fish and you give him snake no one of them will come and ask you for bread and you give him a stone but inherently compared to me you are evil and you yet give good gifts unto your children he now say how much more that is in a greater context in, in an income Parable context. Will your father give good things to them 
that what? So your model of fatherhood, as good as it is, because your children would say you're a good man. I like to think of myself as a good man. I, I'm, oh my God. My son comes to me and says, you are the best father on earth. Yeah, I've got that many times, you know. So in my own, I believe that I'm a good man. I believe so. But the Bible says, if ye be evil compared to God, your model, as bright as it is, is equated to evil. He says, in a greater dimension beyond your comprehension, this our heavenly Father is able to give, desires to give good things to them that will be stupid enough to engage in prayer. Them that will be stupid enough to ask him. So it means that, are you there with me? Are you there now? So prayer becomes a bait by which we can explore such goodness that is in God that we cannot find in our earthly parents. I know your earthly, your earthly parents were wonderful people and all of that. There, there, there is goodness in God that is way beyond the dimension that you have felt around your earthly parents. God wants to give you direct access to the texture of his parentage and this parentage is in many dimensions in many aeons different from the good you had in your family and through prayer we can access it so I just brought this scripture just to educate any father that is in this room that said well you know I have an idea of how the father is because I'm a father oh, sorry your model in this chart is called evil and uh, hallelujah so each and every one of us will need to explore the dimensions of God's good which is not inherent in our mod model of fatherhood and we can explore that if we decide to begin to ask is that clear I believe you've been blessed by the video you just watched once again do not forget to like comment, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to be God's extended hand of love by sharing this content with someone out there.